the lights and, and, and standing. Um, I got one joke. Um, uh, so basically, it's not a joke. It's a sad story because uh, my wife left me with my best friend. And so now I really miss him. Um, yeah, and that's, that's, that's all the jokes there will be. So I'm sorry for that. Um, today's talk is going to be about marketing for developers. And that's a topic I think that is not really that much covered during this kind of events. Um, the first uh, question I want to give you is how, much of you, uh, how many of you have uh, done anything with marketing? Oh, that's a reasonable amount. Okay. Um, I hope that there will be um, a lot of valuable content for you. Um, so my story is basically that I, three years ago, I have switched from being a developer into being a co-founder of a company that does software, does that uh, own products, and also I do trainings. And for all of those things, I have to do either marketing or sales, and I had to learn all of it the hard way. So now I want to share this knowledge with uh, fellow developers who are uh, basically at the place when I was three years ago. Uh, the idea is that for developers, um, developers see kind of differently marketing than the rest of the people. Like marketers see themselves like a madman, and the developers see them more like this. So we do the stuff, and they just do the monkey things. Um, but the truth is that it's really, really hard to sell the, uh, the, the product if you don't do marketing. Um, Probably you, have, you know the story, you um, wake up one day and you get like, yeah, I have an idea. I will take this API, I will put it in the app, and that's all. I will have a lot of money. And the problem is that, of course, there are stories like um, Flappy Birds, which was like overnight success and, and uh, basically was having uh, uh, thousands of dollars every day. But the truth about this is that it is, uh, there is a thing called survival bias, which basically um, makes you think that things, that the success comes all the way, because you, all that you heard is about success. You don't hear about these failures. And the truth is that only one hundredth uh, of a percent of apps that are created will be a financial success. So most probably your app won't be a success if you don't do uh, proper preparation and uh, then proper uh, things with marketing and sales just to make money of it. So let's talk about programmers' approach to uh, products. Uh, do you know these guys, those guys? Yeah, those are uh, South Park gnomes and they have a really good business plan. Phase one, collect underpants. Phase two, and phase three, profit. So basically, that's exactly the approach of average developer who uh, have uh, developed the app uh, and make profit. Uh, but this really don't work. Um, and do you know to want uh, to know? Uh, do you want to know the ultimate uh, marketing trick? It's basically doing things that people want. So they just go to you and they and you have to just show them the app and they will pay for it. And the hard thing is that you have to know what they want and not what you cannot uh, what you can develop today. So if you have like oh, I got this idea, it probably will be a uh, super famous and I will use this API and this data from this. Um, but most of the uh, most of the time it's better to use a proven, um, proven approach. So we can do it like this. One, do research before you code. Not you start coding and then you think how to make money of, of the app or what exactly I'm going to do. So after that, code as little as possible. I know this goes uh, uh, not, not, not for you, not as you would expect. But let's hold the coding to, till the very end. 
if you have something that, have you, uh, that you have done, you know what you want to do, you have something, then you go to your clients and you show it to them and you wait for them to reply. Are they interested? Are they going to pay? If yes, if you have uh, a clear um, signals that they're going to pay for the things that you're, you're planning to spend hundreds and thousands of hours, then you can start doing and then launch it to the, pub, uh, to the public. Also, it's not that you just launch it on your Google Play account and it's okay and there is, will be a profit. Then, basically, the work starts again. You have to promote it. And then there's profit. Okay, so let's talk about all of those points. So, first of all, who are you trying to help? Because it's much, much easier to sell if you're trying to help someone. Because if you're trying to help someone with a thing that is really a pain for them, then probably they're going to pay for that. So you have to know your perfect audience. You have to know who they are, what, they, what kind of problems they have, and what, where you can find them. So basically, if you know, um, I don't know, you, you do an application for uh, members of, of gym or for trainers, then if you know where are the uh, groups, Facebook groups, uh, forums, or events where the trainers arrive, then you can easily promote it on those venues. If you know, um, if you know your group, then probably you should define a persona. Okay, I created, I created this presentation for a guy named Adam. Uh, this is a guy from stock, of course, um, but he is, uh, let's say, a real person. So I gave him a name, I gave him occupation, I gave him hobbies, I gave him problems that he has in everyday life. So every time I have to think about um, how my customer will, um, will do something or uh, where will he go, then I can ask what Adam will do, and then I know. Um, basically, start with uh, m uh, at most three to five people, uh, because if you're trying to create uh, more than three, five uh, person personas, then probably your uh, target group is too wide. So probably you're trying to be next Facebook, and that doesn't work most of the time. Um, you can get data about your clients or your uh, personas uh, from different places. If you have um, some kind of uh, data like analytics about a similar group, then it's perfect. But otherwise, you have to get some data from reports, from just asking people. You can, you can find a lot of um, definitions of personas, a lot of books about creating personas. So you basically create this kind of document when you describe, when you give it a, a, a photo, so it, it looks like a person to you, and you try to get as much data about this person as possible. Second thing, when you know who you're trying to get to, is checking if there is competition. If there is no competition, most probably it is a bad thing. Of course, we're trying to, to do like, oh, I have found the perfect idea. No one has done it. So I'm going to be first and I'm going to rock the, rock, uh, the market. Most probably not. Not at this point. It's, it's not the, the moment when you can think about a new uh, product or new app that haven't been done in any way anywhere. Because now there is more than, I uh, think, 2 million uh, apps on, uh, on Google Play and a lot of apps on, on App Store. So, so getting, uh, if you see that there is a, a lot of competition, the, it means that there is also a lot of money in there. Like dating um, apps, that's a huge market. And still, I, I, I receive every once in a while um, uh, a proposal for creating um, a dating apps. So we have, to, um, we have to analyze it. OK, then you try to analyze, are people searching within Google uh, for that kind of uh, problem? 
So you can go to Keyword Planner. That's a, a, a free tool from Google. Uh, it's basically a part of Ad AdWords. And see how many queries for a search term has been done um, during the last month, for example. And you can see that, uh, for example, there is a lot of queries about app for a fitness trainer. And that means there is a demand. But also you will see that there is hype competition for that. So maybe if you don't have a budget and you don't have an idea how to promote or how to make it distinct, uh, then not try to go in into a very high uh, volume um, field. Okay, other thing is trends. So if you're trying to get into the trend, especially trying get to get ahead of a trend and create something that will, be, uh, uh, that will be popular in a month or a year, then Google Trends is a good idea. And also, if you are very specific, you can use tools like Market Samurai. Those are basically uh, a keyword planner on steroids. So it gives you a really specific information about searches uh, in Google. Okay, and if you have all of the data that you could, you could uh, collect it using the, uh, basically, Google, then you should left, get out of the building and go to your customer. Because you can also do some surveys, but a lot of people lie in the surveys because they don't feel any kind of obligation, so they just put, ah, oh, yeah, I'm training every day, uh, like three hours a day. So you can do interviews. And interviews are a really good idea because, first of all, you speak with a real person that's pro most probably uh, a part of your target group. And you ask them, what was the last time you had this problem? Was it hard for you? Why was it hard? Uh, do you have a specific way to handle it? Maybe the problem that you're thinking of is already solved. And if it's not solved in a perfect way, what could be a perfect solution for that? If, if you can find some, uh, some problems which people have really uh, struggling with, and you can find a better solution than existing one, this is a good indication of a product you should focus on. Okay, so you have the idea, you know who you're targeting, you know uh, what are the pains, what, are, what is probably the solution. You have a small idea what you want to do. At this point, you don't start to code as much as you would like to, if you're a developer, of course. You start with MVP, and I don't mean model view presenter, though it's, it's a good idea to use it. Um, it's Minimal viable product is a minimal thing you can create just to check if the idea you have will be something that the clients will be uh, willing to pay or will be willing to use at least. So invest as little as possible to create this MVP. Show it to people and check if anyone is interested. And if so, try to do it. We have learned it hard way. Basically, at some point, we wanted to do a portfolio item for us. So we thought, huh, Kickstarter doesn't have an uh, Android app. We will do uh, a, like, like a small Kickstarter app. So we just um, did some material design things. Uh, we have uh, looked into their API and created an app called Kick, uh, well, it was Kickstarter and Android, at least. Uh, we did a Medium post, and we get some attention. And after like two days, there was an email in my inbox from the VP of engineering at uh, Kickstarter. And they say, OK, we love that you're trying to do this thing. But unfortunately, you cannot do it. So that was we could have just done the Medium post, and it would be as efficient. but. It, Okay, we're, re we're, we're in the startup world, so we have pivoted, pivoted. And basically we have created an open source version, which doesn't say anywhere Kickstarter, it's called Kick Material, 
And it's a really, really uh, nice pr looking project that uh, shows some of our skills. It now has like four, uh, 1,400 stars on GitHub. But the MVP can be a, a very simple version of your app, but also it can be, for example, a video. That's the thing that uh, uh, Dropbox is famous for. They have, after they have created a small project, they have created a video which was explaining how the uh, Kickstarter works without showing the, uh, uh, how the Dropbox work, without showing the Dropbox at all. It's basically just putting your things into uh, a box and then in the other box you take it out. It, it, it gets them a lot of attention and a lot of signups. That's why the idea. Our uh, whole uh, Kickstarter thing is basically this. So every, uh, every project on Kickstarter starts with a video. You can start with something called Wizard of Oz. And that's basically an idea. You create a, a website, and you pretend that you have the product. If there is something hard about the product, you fake it. So in, in an example of Zappos, they created a website, they showed the uh, shoes, but when someone ordered it, they go to the store and just bought it from the store and send it. So basically they knew that the people are willing to buy shoes online and then they could build like warehouses and everything uh, related to that. And also there is this idea of landing page, which is really, really common. Uh, because a landing page is basically the easiest thing you can do. Uh, so you create a, a page that has a one specific goal. It shows what the, your product is, and it gives a one action to do. Uh, you, you take some traffic, you put it onto your website, and see if the people are interested after seeing only the landing page. You collect emails or uh, some kind of uh, like sign up or, or payment if you are that good. But creating a good landing page is a science. There is a lot of tinkering, like what names use, what copy use, how to place buttons, what should be there, and all of that. And there is a lot of knowledge about that in the field uh, on the web. Um, for example, we have created um, a, a website for Amzakupe. That's one of our projects. It's basically gathering uh, promotions from, from different sites. And basically, we started with a website and a button. And if someone clicked it, we knew that the people are interested into downloading it without even creating the, the whole app. Uh, okay, so how to create a landing, app, uh, a landing page? Uh, of course, you can code it, but I don't recommend it because there is a lot of tools like uh, lead pages, landingy, and a lot of them. Uh, you can buy ready templates on ThemeForest and different kinds of sites. Uh, there is a lot of stores for that. Or you can even get uh, free templates from things like lead pages when they uh, send a really good quality templates for free. You just have to save your uh, email there. And also you can, of course, code it, but only if you have to. If you cannot find anything that is as good as you would like to, uh, because I would like to say that coding should be at the very end. So it is a thing. If, if it's, it, it is something that we tend to go into without thinking about the hard part, what about the marketing, the sales. So if you have a possibility of uh, coding, then you will start to code and not doing the, the business thing. So can we start coding now that we have done all of it? No, marketing goes first. So now, when you have this small thing that you can show to people, then go and show it to people. You know who to show it, where to show it, because you know who, uh, where those people go. So how to get traffic to our uh, MVP website or landing page or video or whatever? Of course, you can get started with paid media, and that's an alternative which is pretty easy because you can start, if you have a budget of like $100 or, uh, or I don't know, $10 per day, you can get a pretty decent traffic. It depends, of course, on the, uh, what you're targeting or who, you, who you're targeting. And you can use AdWords if 
you know that the people are searching for the term. So if you have seen that uh, people are searching for um, uh, fitness trainers, then, uh, then you can use Google. If you don't know what they are exactly searching for, or you, don't, you know only who they are, but not what the exact phrase would be, then you can lose Facebook ads. At Facebook, you can target specific groups and show only to people who uh, like this page and this page, but not this page. And this gives you a great opportunity. Also, you can target by demographics. So you can say, I want a, a female between 18 and 35 who does like, um, I don't know, some, some um, um, clothing brand, for example. And also, if you get, tar if you get traffic from uh, sources like paid media, then most probably you want to use retargeting. It's basically the thing when you get uh, marked as a, a, as a person who has visited the page, and then you know that, uh, and basically then you can show only to those people. So if you were once on a booking.com website, then most probably you will see uh, commercial ads or for hotels everywhere. Because you're marked, you just get a cookie and, and then you're, uh, you're targeted. Okay, the other way of getting traffic is SEO. But it's not the SEO like five years ago. Now a lot of have changed because Google have introduced um, uh, Penguin and Panda uh, updates. And they basically remove all of those crappy websites which were just created to, um, to uh, make links and, and uh, pump up the, the results. Now it's more about getting a, a good quality a website which is having a, a good links uh, inside, good uh, headers and, and everything of that. And then getting a good content. And now content is a, a, a best way to get uh, Customers could to get uh, like customers flowing all the time. The problem is it takes a long time. You have to be committed into spending hours and hours and days into creating content, promoting it, and then uh, collecting the traffic. And also, if you create enough content, you will get into the area of long tail. Long tail is basically things like, this is from my website, and for example, I got some traffic from things like Universal Image Loader Cache. So I, I wrote uh, some article about it, and now uh, different really like long strings that people type into Google Leave, lead them to me, to my website. Okay, so how to do this content thing? You have to create some content, promote it, and then promote it some more. It's really important to not just create a content and just leave it on your website, but show it to every kind of uh, social media you have, uh, send it to your people who you know and try to get as much attention and also do it a few times. If you post just one on Twitter, it will be like three minutes later, it will be gone basically. No one will get it. So you post a few times a day and then there is a possibility that different people will see it. Okay, so First of all, create content for your clients. Not the things you know, but the, clients, the, the things that the client wants. So for example, this is an example of my friend's uh, uh, SAS uh, SaaS uh, um, product, which is basically targeted at uh, languages school, uh, schools, and he creates things that are useful for, for, for the people in language schools. Also, Realm is a great example. I have spoken yesterday with guys from Realm, and they are doing a lot of things uh, in their office just to create and promote the, soft, uh, the, the uh, things which are the content which is useful to you, to developers, because you are basically the customers. So they don't really mind about Android and, and iOS that much, as for they know that you mind, so they put all the content uh, there. Okay, there's blogging. Uh, blogging is now really like famous and everyone should be blogging. Uh, maybe not everyone, but a lot of. Because it builds authority. It says that you are the expert 
as uh, the, the keynote at the first day said. Uh, it attracts an audience which is also engaged. So it didn't have, it's like, not like just people getting into a website and, and just bouncing off. Those are people who get there because they see the content and they, oh, I like this guy because he writes uh, interesting stuff and then maybe I'll buy some of his product. Or I like the company because they uh, produce interesting stuff. And also it attracts links. If you have like top 10 Android tools, then most probably uh, a different people will be linking to your website. That's just an example. And also it gives you um, an SEO juice. Okay. Also, if you have a blog, then a great idea or, or a video or YouTube or whatever, or, then it is a good idea to reach to the people who are in the same niche like, like you um, and to talk to them like, I will create a content for you and you will publish it and you will give a link back to my, uh, to my website. This is a really common thing uh, on, on blogging, in YouTube, uh, you see a lot of cooperation between channels because they, okay, it, now today we are doing with this channel, subscribe them and, and, and things like that. It is a win-win because the person who are, is publish, publishing the, the post is getting a free content and that's always a good thing. And also, it is a good thing to create, uh, for example, a landing page. So if you have created a, a link, then let this link lead to your uh, special website for people from that website. So hello from this blog. Uh, I hope you liked my article. This is more that you can see about this topic. That's perfect conversion. Whoops. Okay. Um, okay, so if you want to uh, write anything, then most probably you get into copywriting, and copywriting is an art. Basically, it is from, from the beginning of the um, last century. Um, there is this idea of AIDA, or well, oh, maybe, uh, who knows AIDA? Okay, like five people, but that's okay. Um, AIDA is a very uh, simple principle. You create a content based on some uh, structure. It is an attention, so you have to get the attention, interest, desire, and then give some action. Let's show you an example. This is a perfect ad for AIDA. You get the um, save uh, thousands on your next car. This is an at attention. So this gives you, like you're scrolling and there is safe thousands on your new car. Then you get some data which builds interest. Then th our sale is only on, back, uh, uh, on this bank holiday weekend. This gives you desire. I wanna, I wanna do something about it. And then you give action. So you show how you can do it. This, in this case, visit this website or call this number. It is a very simple structure used in a lot of, lot of uh, different ads throughout uh, like the last 100 years. And also the headlines. Those are the most important thing. Uh, if you're creating a blog post, a lot of time, if it's on like uh, product hunt, hacker news or whatever, the headline is the only thing you got. If you get a good headline, then most probably someone will click. Otherwise, it's a no-go. So there is a proven uh, list of kinds of uh, headlines you can use. Basically, this, there are templates. Um, and you have seen a lot of them in, in different places. Let's say um, how to write a killer headline and scale your product. Or seven examples of headlines that sell. You can do anything, like seven examples of anything. Why some headlines? get you to read more? Or do you like the six mistakes? Do you make the six mistakes in your headline? And you're thinking, huh, do I? What are the six mistakes? Maybe I'll make them. And I click them. 82% of readers don't check in the data in the headlines, but they look good. Okay, of course, it's better if, if they're real, but not always. And the lazy programmer's way to write headline. That's the someone's who's famous way of doing something. That's also a, a proven way. And 
if you if you look at any women's magazine, and not only women's, now now also a, a men's magazine, there is a lot of those templates used everywhere. Like 50 ways to seduce a man, or um, Olivia White. Uh, this this is like um, oh, six choices that will make you happier. For example, those are templates, and you know that those guys have to uh, or girls have to do it right because. There is basically uh, the cover is only that they have to get a client. Okay, and the other thing, when you get the traffic on your website, it's really it's really easy that the person will okay read it and then don't do any action about it or just leave it. So you have to try to get there to a relationship. And best way to get uh, this kind of relationships is either doing like Facebook thing, but now no one sees what you publish on, on Facebook anymore because you have to pay. And the list, the email list is ba basically the best way. So you create a list of mails when the people have to leave their mail and then you contact them with some additional information. And always remember to use providers which require double opt-in, which means that you, uh, you leave the mail and then you send the mail to a person and then he has to confirm. It's required by law. Uh, there are a lot of different providers that differ by price, by what, are they, uh, what they give you. But, okay, how to get the mails? How to, how to uh, force people to leave their uh, email on the website? Um, there are proven ways, like a newsletter. So you just collect a mail and then you send some information like every week or something like that. And this is a really good idea. Who use uh, Android Weekly? Yeah, and the other ones should use it. Um, because it's really good, uh, like sum up of, of of everything that's going on in the Android community, and also there was like this book, this book, marketing for developers, which was basically like an idea for me to create this presentation. Uh, the guy who who created it had uh, collected uh, mails and then sent people information: what is about to get into the book, how do you like, uh, some snippets. And basically, when he launched the book, he already got a customers, list of customers. He, said, he sent the mail to the list with, uh, OK, today is, the book is 50% off. And basically, he got this spike in, uh, in uh, sales on the first day. Uh, and that's a really good way. So you create a, a community of people who are waiting for your product and not you have to force feed them with a the product. Okay, so the other way to get people to leave an email is to create something called autoresponder. It's basically that they automatically leave their email and like in one day, two days, five days, whatever, they get some bits, uh, bits of information. You don't have to write the mail, well, you have to do it once and then just specify the days when it will, will be sent. And basically this is perfect for doing like courses, like uh, teaching something, um, and I've used it in uh, a, a something called Mobile Academy. It's basically a small course about, a video course about uh, creating um, a, a good mobile product. Uh, if you are a client of, of, of like our agency. And that's also a good example of, uh, of getting the content not that you want to produce, but that your clients need to see and educate them. The other way is to create something called lead magnet. It's basically um, you exchange an email for something, let's say, physical, like a PDF, video, whatever. And also, I have tested it. Um, I have created like uh, an ebook um, that looks like it is a real thing, but it's just a graphic. And then there was like 50 pages uh, of uh, useful tools for Android developers. And that's for my uh, basically a website when I do trainings. So people who are interested into uh, tools for Android developers are mostly probably uh, also interested into getting um, trainings about Android. And webinars. This is also a way, a very good way. People like to uh, attend webinars. Uh, there is also time at the end to, to sell something, and a lot of people do it. Um, I'm not so much into webinars yet, but most probably I will do it. Uh, Amy Porterfield is, is like 
a, a celebrity in, in a webinar space and also in Facebook space. She does a lot of it and, and at the end of this webinar she sells all of her courses and, and trainings and, and like, things like that. Okay, so now you have the emails and, and, and also attention of your, uh, of your customers. Now you can test whether your idea or your small product is going to, uh, to work. And don't try to test, uh, to, to uh, guess it, try to test it. Uh, so you get some clients, you show them the MVP, uh, you get the feedback, and also you can do A-B testing. So basically you show them, uh, a part of them you show one version, a part of them you show the other version, and you check which one is, is getting better responses. But the ultimate version of validating your idea is pre-sale. So if you are able to get any money before you have created something bigger or uh, uh, the, the whole product, so just you have created a landing page or, or a demo or something very small, then it makes perfect sense to just get, uh, get to creating this kind of product. And uh, it is an uh, example. There was this uh, product called Cl uh, Clinic Rise, and they basically uh, did a software for uh, medical people, and they have raised thirty-five thousand dollars before they have done anything. Like they got the idea, maybe the landing page, and they got to the uh, the, the people uh, showing them the idea, what they will do, and they basically paid for development before they started. And also, you should analyze uh, and measure the 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 the. the the things that the people are doing on your website. You can use Google Search Console to see what kind of traffic is going to your website, so uh, how people are searching for your website. Uh, you can, of course, use any kinds of Google Analytics, Mixpanel, all of that to see uh, what kind of places are clicking, how long they are staying. You can use heat maps to see where they are clicking, like physically, they're clicking at this button and this button, but not on this button. Like this is 50 clicks, this is two clicks. And also you can use things like uh, URL shorteners, like Bitly, to just see how, much, how many people have downloaded your files or clicked your links from different sources. So when you create it, you can launch it. Uh, for, uh, for apps, it's basically getting some attention at the very beginning, because otherwise it is a problem. You can create something called press release. So it's basically a pack of information for people who can write about it. Prepare everything, like screenshots, uh, basically things that they can copy paste into their website and make it as their own article, because that's how a lot of pages work. They just copy paste the press re releases and pretend they are articles. And then you use cold emails. So you try to find people who can write about it and write to them directly. I recommend that you find people by name, by personal name, not send like contact at something, but John at something. And you can use tools like Reportive uh, to find people in uh, LinkedIn. So if they use this email in LinkedIn profile, then this is a plugin for Gmail, and you just type the name, and you see if the person is on this email. Or Hunter.io, which is like a step ahead, and it basically crawls the web and find an email template. So you know that at this company, they use first name, crop, dot, last name uh, as, a, as a template. So you basically just take the, the, the data of the guy and you create a mail and then you send it to him. And you build relationship. You don't try to like first time sell. You try to say, I liked your article about that. You may be interested into this because I have created something like that. And also there is this product video, uh, which can be cost, uh, costly, but can, you can also use templates. And I, I have a, a great case. Who have vi seen the Dollar Chef Club? Okay. That would be uh, something interesting. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. 
And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors, we're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're gonna stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are dollarshaveclub.com and the party is on. And then can be profit. If you do a lot of this marketing, tedious tasks of getting uh, people to go to your page, uh, to um, get interest, you know what they are exactly want, then build it and promote it, then you can get profit. Um, the idea uh, of, for, for the video, uh, they have a lot of those kind of video. You can the Google the Google Dollar Shake Club. They have some interesting ones. They were acquired by Unilever for a uh, billion dollars last year, based on basically those videos and a lot of traffic that they get, get through that. Um, okay, and that's all. Uh, thank you for your attention. If there are any questions, I, I have not some time, and then I'll be for uh, like two hours uh, after the presentation. You can talk to me uh, on whatever ideas you have. Thank you.